The content discussed in this episode is for educational or informative purposes only and should not be replaced by individualized professional consultations or professional medical advice. Welcome to the Founder Series of Dr. Of the Podcast. This year, I'm signing up for a triathlon happening in summer and to prepare myself, in this Founder Series, I'm going to be having one-on-one conversations with experts in the field and hopefully it will keep myself accountable and nurture my community on a day-to-day. So without further ado, hope you enjoy this episode. So hi, everyone. So today I'd like to tackle what is the right training to have uh, to prepare yourself for triathlon. And so to guide the conversation, I'm speaking to Elle Linton, who is a fitness professional who specializes in helping women in finding their strength in running and cycling. Welcome, Elle. Hi, Goonie. Thank you so much for having me. To tell you the truth, the reason why I want to speak about training and preparation, mine is not, it's not (laughs) the best. (laughs) You're not alone, don't worry. Okay, at least, you know, it feels better. But the thing is that I don't know how to start, what to do. I do some running every other day. I do some cycling every other day. The swimming is the hard part because it's very cold these days. So getting the motivation to go there is another thing you basically sound like me when I started triathlon like (laughs) the biking and the running they were okay the swimming I actually had to learn to swim to be able to to do a triathlon and I cannot stand the cold weather and I cannot stand cold water so I was that person who turned up to the swimming pool in like a full length a full length rush guard like sleeve (laughs) I I spent like 10 minutes like dipping my toe in trying to get the courage to get into the pool so I I know exactly how you feel but as for training I think the first thing that you need to do right now is sit down calculate my event is on this day and I have this many weeks to train Um, and then you just need to do the best of the time that you've got one of the biggest things about triathlon and multi-sport events is that you have to train your body not only to run not only to cycle not only to swim but to do them consecutively so that's what you then need to do in your training you need Mm. to practice what it feels like to go from your your swim to your run and you need to practice to go from your run to your bike because when you or bike to run which way is it swim bike run (laughs) so yeah swim Swim, bike run yeah that's right there's the other way around you need to practice from your bike to your run which is a really unique feeling when you get off the bike and you then have to start running because you've just been used to a completely different motion so yeah brick training that's what it's called is probably one of the most important things that you need to add into your schedule um, and vary that up to get used to feeling and know that you can do it when it comes to race day um, and then I think the main thing is consistency like you need to do something and you need to do it consistently right and build it up towards the distances of your event so I did I'm, I'm not completely ignorant on the subject I did some <laughs> research the hardest part actually is the transition or oh, it's an element of the race that people don't always consider. Well, how do I train for that? They call that the fourth discipline, the transition, because there's also a few rules around transition that could get you disqualified from the event. So I know that sounds serious, right? Really? <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. So, but that's what you would practice at home as well when you do those brick sessions. So when you do your bike, you're going to set your kit up on the floor um and then you hop off your bike and you hop into your run kit or change whatever you need to change and then get out the door so you're working on you're figuring out what kit you need to change like how to place your kit and then cutting down the time that it takes to get off the bike and get out the door for a run so yeah transition is also very important now I'm getting scared do you need to do something (laughs) (laughs) you have to like, like set up something with your bike no the main rule is about your helmet like you are not allowed to, you're not allowed to get on your bike um, before you put your helmet on. Oh. And so when you go into transition, the first thing you should really do is put your helmet on and okay. then like change your shoes into running shoes. Um, wait, hold on. That's the other way around. 
and then cycling like, you just come out of the swim put your helmet on I know I'm getting confused here I'm like which way does the triathlon go yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're getting on the bike put your helmet on first and then you know it's done you can't forget it and you're right. off mm, okay that's a good advice so you're on your bike you're riding off and then you're done now you need to transition to running and you were saying this change of motion from cycling to to actually being on the ground and how do you train for that so just by doing it so you do a bike session whether indoors or outdoors you get mm. home you switch to your running shoes and you go and start with a 10 minute run after and then you build that up next time you do a 20 minute run and then you build put it up and up and up until you're like closer to the distances that you're going to need to run after biking like this is a 40 kilometers bike and a 9.6 kilometer run do do I have to build myself up to train a 40 kilometer uh, bike and then no and okay because yo this is a lot (laughs) (laughs) I'd say probably the max the max run you do off the bike is like 30 minutes I'd say Mm. um where you're covering close to 5k because it's more it's just more about training your legs to run off the bike rather than your actual run training because you will or might do that separately like training for the 9.6k all right so that's the transition and how do you build yourself up for the individual sport which is running biking and swimming that depends on time And I guess swimming is probably the most technical one. Um, So when I was training for triathlon, I had individual swimming lessons because, like I said, I had to learn to swim and then I had to try and find some semblance of a technique. (laughs) So (laughs) swimming is good to potentially like go to group classes or go to lessons Mm. if you can. Um, group classes are more affordable and then with cycling cycling is probably the one that's kind of the most expensive because you need like the right equipment you need a bike um, unless you can borrow one from a friend um, Mm. or family member and then ideally you need like some kit that will help support you feeling comfortable on the bike that's right Um, and then running is the one that everyone's like oh it's free but yeah. you need like good shoes to run and make sure you don't get yourself injured. You learned how to swim to, to do this triathlon. I found this terrifying. I'm just trying to like put myself in your shoes. And I was like, I don't know. How the hell did you do this? And where first, first question is, in what type of waters did you swim? Was like, was it in the sea? I've been told that getting into the water is the most daunting thing when everyone's rushing like crazy people into the water. How the hell did you do that? So I have to be honest with you, and they're not wrong. But firstly, let's cover the where did I swim. When I signed up for my triathlon, (laughs) when I signed up for my triathlon, I did not realize that it was going to be in the River Thames. Um, And when I found out, I was mortified. (laughs) because I would be too. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) That adds a whole other element because that then becomes open water swimming. Um, And... I did all my lessons in a pool and then I did have to take some lessons in open water swimming because it's a completely different thing um (laughs) and when it comes to the start of the swim I mean I don't want to scare you or anything but it is crazy but can I just say (laughs) can I just say that you don't have to run like a crazy person into the water my first triathlon I just I went up to the person who was doing the swim star and I said hi this is my first triathlon I'm really nervous um I don't I don't feel comfortable swimming with a lot of people and he was like cool no worries just stand over there to the side we'll do the star everyone will rush in and then leave it a few seconds however long minute and then you go in and that's what I did um and that was yeah and they're also swimming Dorney Lake. And that was, that was, it's so much nicer when you're at the back. It's calm and right. you don't have anyone swimming over you. You don't have anyone like punching you as they swim. Mm. <laughs> and also they have like safety kayaks. And when I was really struggling, like the kayak guy stayed with me and like just encouraged mm-hmm. me to keep going. And when I needed to rest, he was like, just hold on here. So I would hold on to the kayak. Oh, that was and, so nice. Okay. You know, so. I had a really positive experience and I think like don't be shy about saying it's your first time right. don't be shy about being nervous like that's completely normal and I went through a stage where 
because I did like a couple of smaller ones Mm -hmm. and I remember one day I woke up on the day of my triathlon and I was feeling so sick like I don't know like I felt physically ill like something wrong with me and what I realized actually as every time I did another triathlon I would wake up feeling sick but less sick and I realized mm. that this was my nerves manifesting as an illness, right. and which sounds crazy, but <laughs> that your body reacts in different ways, right? And the more that I did it, and the more that I experienced it, the less nervous I became, the less, mm-hmm. le- the less sick I felt on that morning. So again, if you know, you're the type of person that feels nervous and mm-hmm. whatnot, you just need to experience it and put yourself in that position so you can get used to feeling those feelings so that when it comes to your big race day you know you're feeling calm and you've got some methods to help you stay calm and stay focused and go do what you got to do you swimming in that how did that go I mean I have to say that for that first triathlon in the Thames I had learned to swim front crawl but when it came to the day I was so nervous like I couldn't I couldn't put my face in the water I had to do like a breaststroke with my head out of the water and I was just like as long as I get to the end I don't even care how I got there so that's what I did Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then again that will come with experience right like Mm -hmm. just do what you gotta do do what you gotta do to get it done yeah love it what's the difference between a training that is targeted for a female versus a man women have hormones at play like we've got our menstrual cycle we've got the hormones that come with that and that affects energy levels that affects how we feel on a day-to-day basis and um, that needs to be taken into account for when you're training for anything and that also affects like your nutrition like women and men have different nutritional nutritional needs and that also that changes during your monthly cycle as well however long your cycle is but yeah most of the research well I'd say a lot of the research has been done on men so whenever you're hearing people saying oh you know this is what you should eat how much carbohydrates you should eat how much protein how much fat actually if you look into the research you'll find that that was based on like 3,018 to 30-year-old men and that doesn't relate to you so it's really important to like find the research that is specifically for who you are Mm. and it's a tough one because like there's not much no there's not and then I think a lot of the content that's out there is really focused on a on a western diet um, mm-hmm. And I know that I was I was not born in the UK. I was born in Barbados in the Caribbean, and I still really like a lot of the foods from home. Yeah. And a lot of those foods are carb heavy. But mm. then all of the all of the content is like, oh, eat less carbs, and you're like, but carbs are life, <laughs> and actually <laughs> they're really good for fueling your training. You know. Right. So I think it's also really important when we're talking to a more diverse audience to to really find ways that we can eat our own foods and have our own culture as part of our training rather than trying to be completely different people just to do a triathlon I love that I love that message because I think that that's like the tricky part because you see uh, most of the people out there who are speaking about their stories about triathlon or even those individual sports are more westernized or the Caucasian groups and so you're just like okay that sounds great but how does my curry fit there how does that (laughs) do you know what I mean and so I get what you meant by organizing yourself with regards to understanding also your your own cycle with regards to your energy level etc so you wouldn't say like push through even if you feel low Uh, for example say you're say you're having your period what is your your advice on that so actually when you're having your period that's potentially when you should or or could perform your best but obviously different people have different symptoms so your cramps might be debilitating you might have you know headaches or something that stops you from moving so I think it's really important to just listen to your body um, learn learn how your cycle flows through the month like keep a record of when you feel energetic when you don't and then tailor your training to that so like you don't want to you don't want to push through and end up injuring yourself you want to come out stronger and better so 
I'm going to ensure you get rest when you need it, recover when you need it and push when you can. But yeah, I think a good a good method for deciding whether to push or not is, you know, if you're not feeling in the mood for a session, just say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to do 10 minutes, I'm going to do 20 minutes. And if after that time, I'm really not feeling this, I'm going to stop. And I think the majority of the time you'll right. get to 20 minutes and you'll actually be like, yeah. you know what, I feel all right. And you keep going and you're like, I'm glad I did that. I'm glad. Yeah, I noticed that as well. It's like before starting, it takes forever. And yeah. you hit you hit a point and you're like, okay, I'm there. <laughs> I'm continuing. <laughs> what would be an advice on how to keep track of this? Because it, I feel it's hard not to get into a self slightly competitive space mm-hmm. where, for example, Strava and all these applications mm-hmm. where you you record them and sometimes you want to share it and sometimes you don't want to share it, but it becomes a bit of a competition, right? Yeah. And so I don't know if it feels healthy or not, but I think it's important to keep track. But like I'm finding um, a tough time to find that balance between tracking the right amount of stuff, uh, like in terms of my training and to what extent and where, what, what's, your, so what's your advice? My advice would be that Strava is a great place. Um, and I think, first of all, what you said there about the line between it being a healthy thing to do and an unhealthy thing to do, tracking everything you do, like you need to know yourself and know whether it could become an unhealthy habit for you. And if it could, like you can still use Strava and just keep everything on private. And you can also like decide which activities are not private. So you could share like a few bits here and a few bits there. Um, and otherwise, like you don't have to go the technology route. You can just keep a little journal and write down your week and what you trained and what you did. And you can just talk about feelings and like, I don't know, on a scale of one to five or just some smiley faces, like a big green smiley face to be like, Do you know what? I felt awesome. Or a little yellow face with a, I don't even know what to call it when it's a straight line across your mouth and you're like, mm, that was all right. Or unhappy yes. face. Like you don't have to, you don't have to use Strava, but I do think it is important, like you said, to track what you're doing. Cause you know, you want to, you want to see how you're progressing. You want to, you want to remember where you started. Cause sometimes when you're in the thick of it, you know, you're like, oh, nothing feels easier. I don't feel like I'm getting stronger, but then you look back and you're like, look at my first week of training. Like I only ran, 4k and almost died and Mm. now I'm running 10k and feeling all right at the end of it so I think it's important from that side of things and also to just like keep an eye on your rest and recovery because that's something that people don't really appreciate and I think we forget that actually your hard work comes together when you stop like your training sessions are important but your body is never going to reap the benefits of those training sessions if you never stop and allow it to heal and come back stronger makes sense makes sense and how was your journey in that like starting off and what was like the biggest challenge as you were training so I'd say for me when I was training for triathlon I had to choose where to focus the majority of my energy which ended up being on swimming because like I couldn't swim to start with so most of my training was swimming based and then brick based so two two activities in one training session and then I just kind of did as much cycling and as much running as I could um so yeah but I was a fair bit younger as well with a fair bit more energy (laughs) so I think (laughs) If I were to train for triathlon today, I probably would train maybe four times a week and also add in the non-specific stuff. So your core workouts, like your weights training, like those kind of things that are going to keep you injury free and also make you stronger for each individual sport as well. Okay, that that sounds somewhat doable um (laughs) the reason why i'm also doing this is to be able to kind of cater to the bam community especially female and get being active because when you look at the bam community unfortunately in at least in the uk they are not active Mm -hmm. south asians are the the least active and then the second least active are actually black women so seeing the stats 
I mean, how do you feel? Like, how does it resonate with you? I mean, doing the job that I do, that doesn't surprise me. It's unfortunate. And there are so many reasons that like come into why that is the case. But I think, and I would like to hope that now that people are realizing this, now that, you know, those stats are there, we can do something about it. Like you can't do something about what you don't know. Um, but yeah, I think, again, it's because, you know, we're, we're living in a Western world again, and our cultures do play a factor in that. And I know that even stuff that's maybe like stereotypical, but, you know, as coming from the Caribbean, for example, like education was always right. like top, top of importance. Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like playing games and playing sport was not seen as important. Especially um, for, and, for a girl, right? So yeah. Put this on the books. So, yeah, exactly. So, you know, coming into, coming into a, a world where, you know, you actually, and I think even more so now as a woman, we have more choices. Like we're able to choose what we want to do and, you know, be, have more freedom. So you can't change a whole, a whole like generation of thinking or generations of thinking in five minutes. It's going to take incremental change over further generations um, to see those stats improve and increase. And it's important for people like us to be out there yeah. doing these things to show everyone that, you know, it's possible mm. and to show everyone that it, it exists. Because when I was in school, like, I didn't even know that people rode bikes other than mm -hmm. to go to the shops or go to work. Like, when a friend at work invited me in my 20s to ride around Richmond Park, I was like, why would I want to do that? Like, what? <laughs> what why would you want to ride in circles? <laughs> and then she told me that we would be stopping for cake and coffee. And I was like, okay, I'm going to try this. <laughs> exactly. That is how I get motivated. Yes. Yeah. But she introduced me to a whole new world like where people were socially riding bikes and people were trying all these different um, categories of cycling, track cycling and cyclocross and all these different things. And you, you need someone to show you, show you that that's there to be able to know it exists. Right. So you, you did touch upon the fact that there's internal factors that make us less active. But what about the factors that are part of those institutions or these sports that could be a bit more tailored to the BAM community? Do you think that there are external factors that we could work on? Yeah, 100%. I think the brands and you know, organizations now have realized, especially over the past couple of years where, you know, the whole race thing has really come to the forefront. And I think that they're having to either do what they say they're going to do or they're going to get left behind because I feel like the BAME community is always put under this stereotype of, you know, they don't have money, they, they, they can't access things because they don't have money. When actually right. our, our spending power is real and mm -hmm. that is a power that we have, you know, choose to spend your money with in the bank community and with brands who are actively supporting like us to get active and be involved as a part of society so yeah I think there's right. definitely steps being taken and there's always more that can be done right mm -hmm. no definitely and I think that even from having more people out there that are even ambassadors so you you're one of them and I think that 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 is something that we need to keep on building and it's having people who are actively going to take a stand to, to say, yeah. like, I want to be uh, an example. Agreed. What are some of the steps that you think we can introduce to the community out there? Because it could sound a bit daunting because uh, you're thinking three individual sports, but then there's these transitions that you need to do might mm -hmm. sound daunting. What is a first step that one could take to be like, it's all right, you know, I'm getting there one step at a time. So one option is a duathlon. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a run, bike, run, and they start at pretty small distances. Or by all means, just start each 
discipline by itself and explore each discipline and um, you can go to uh, like local community events like park run which is a 5k run every saturday it's free it's a really nice way to get involved in the community you can even volunteer um as you know as um part of the organization team so that you can just have a feel for it rather than have to run your first time and when it comes to triathlon british triathlon i think they have a program called go try where they do really small events um they do women specific events i do believe and they also talk you through you know some of the protocol about triathlon so they'll go over transition and help you to understand how that works and what the rules are and give you as many tips as they can um, um, and then I think it's about like finding a community so finding mm-hmm. a group that's local to you um, and don't stop until you find a group that you feel comfortable in like most triathlon clubs for example you can go along to a few sessions to see if you know it feels like a good fit for you and if it doesn't don't go back find another one and then sometimes yeah. you know if you can't find you can't find a group then you just need to make your own group just rope rope a a family member or friend in and make your own little group and be accountable to each other and do it (laughs) love it when you start thinking about it there's no real excuse you just Mm -hmm. need to do it and there's always options for you out there you just need to be okay to feel slightly uncomfortable and so now we are we're going to slowly close off our episodes with rapid fire questions so Mm -hmm. people can get to know you better And so the first one is, what is the first sign that you recognize when you're out of balance? I would say I get super tired and feel a little bit low. And then sometimes I'll get like stomach issues and tension in my muscles. And as a follow-up, what do you do to, what is the coping mechanism that you've identified? My coping mechanism is 100% to prioritize sleep. So I make sure that I go to bed on time get eight and a half minimum hours of sleep I eat well have my three meals a day I take supplements and I hydrate those are my those are my things to rebalance myself love it what is a book that impacted your approach to wellness oh this is a tough one (laughs) I'd say the most recent book that's impacted my approach to wellness is the miracle morning routine um and it gave me a way to structure my mornings which allows me to get more out of my day and Mm -hmm. therefore my week my month my year and my life Um, Mm -hmm. and I think it's prop it's not probably it's definitely a good one for people who are training for events as well because you have an opportunity to visualize and to create goals and to use affirmations and you can think about your event you know and be like I will I will swim confidently and I am a confident swimmer and you tell yourself that you can do this and you see yourself at that swim start feeling confident feeling strong and doing it and that's what's going to (laughs) happen yes yes I love it it's it's that routine right that discipline but yeah the routine doesn't mean that okay I'm going to be swimming this amount it's also like scheduling in as you said those affirmations those things are going to keep you grounded and feeling like safe as well so love it thank you thank Thank you you. (laughs) what would be the best way for our audience to keep in touch with you so you can find me on all social media, all social media um, <laughs> under L Linton. And then you can also come to my classes. I run classes specifically for women who are looking to get strong in running, cycling or fitness. And I also have a community called Beyond CC, which is for women of color and women to support them to find their strong on a bike with training plans and off the bike classes so lots going on <laughs> you know what i might be in your classes uh, very soon because i need that support i think so thank you again thank you so much for being on the show and speak soon thank you Gini. if you enjoyed this episode go ahead and select that follow or subscribe button for now stay safe and we'll see you next week mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.